Hi, I'm Arlen Geyer. If you're a serious digital photographer, then you're shooting RAW files rather than JPEG because of the extra overhead it gives you for corrections to exposure or color or any number of other uh, details. And RAW files tend to be rather large. Let's just take a look at how big these files are. Uh, let's see, I want to go to Show in Explorer. I'm in Windows. If I were on a Mac, then this would be Show in Finder. So here we are. Uh, these files are somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, between 10 and 13 megabytes each. So that um, requires a fair amount of space to store. So um, typically you would want, you would fill up a conventional, you don't want to fill up your primary hard drive, your um, your system drive uh, on a PC that would be your, your C drive on a Mac, I believe it would be called your Mac drive, um, but you don't want to fill that up. You always want to make sure there's there's some room on that. So it's a good idea to store these on an external hard drive. And for years, I would buy a new hard, a new external hard drive at the beginning of each year, and um, I found that I could use a 250 gigabyte drive and uh, come close to filling it up, but not quite in the course of a year. So each year I would buy two of them. One would be my primary and the other would be my backup. And then I'd buy another the following year and another the following year. But if you take a look in here, I've got, uh, let's see, we go back to, I started really getting serious about this in 2004. So 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11 were on the eighth year. And so at two drives a year, that's 16 hard drives I've got sitting under my desk. And that's really beginning to get untenable. So at the beginning of this year, I went and bought a two terabyte drive and I um, uh, transferred everything from all those years onto that. So now drive N here is a two terabyte drive, actually it says 1.8. Um, and that has everything on it. And I have two of those. So let's um, take a look here in uh, my computer and you can see this Western Digital Photo Library 1 Drive N uh, which is approaching full uh, is my uh, primary uh, image library and then I have Photo Library 1 Backup which is Drive X uh, which is basically the same thing and I have a backup program that simply every night copies anything that has not yet been backed up from Drive N to Drive X um, and I'll show you what that looks like. We go to the program is called Super Flexible File Synchronizer, and it's a great little program. Uh, there are other ways. On, a, on a, it's recently been made available for a Mac also. There's another program for a Mac called Super Duper, which is very similar, but. Um, doesn't matter what program you use as long as it's something that, that actually just copies the files from one location to the other ideally without having to copy ones that have already been copied so you can see that uh, here uh, I go copy from drive N to drive X and this happens at 2 a.m. every day I have another one that backs up my um, storage one location which is where I have word processing files and miscellaneous stuff like that but this happens every day and um, so all those files are backed up. Now the beauty of this system is that I'm not compressing the files into a backup um, uh, algorithm where they have to, would have to be restored. They're right there. Let me open this up again for you. Um, they're right there in this drive in the same form they are in here. If I look in here, you can see that's what that structure looks like. And if I open up this one, it looks exactly the same. So should my... Um, N drive fail, and those of you who have been around computers for a while certainly know that it, um, you know the expression. It's not a question of if your hard drive is going to fail; it's simply a question of when. Of course, you may get rid of the computer before it happens, but hard drives do fail, and so it's happened to me. On, on I think I've had uh, three image drives fail on me over the years, um, but um, should the drive N fail? then all I have to do is change the 
um, letter specification of drive X from X to N, and Lightroom doesn't know the difference. It just continues going on. So there is virtually no downtime in doing that. Then I simply buy a second, uh, buy an additional drive, and start the process of copying everything from the uh, existing drive to that new backup drive. And uh, very simple, and um, the transfer is extremely quick and painless. Uh, and if you're on a Mac, by the way, instead of having drive letters, it's simply the drive name that it goes by. So I would simply change the name from Photo Library 1 back up to Photo Library 1, and uh, the Mac would just see that as the same drive. So as long as that is a, an exact copy of the data, then it is very efficient and um, and takes virtually no time at all to uh, get your backup running. Now, if you want to be especially safe, you should have a third drive, uh, which is an also identical copy, and store that one off-site. So maybe once a week you bring that uh, on-site and um, bring it up to date, and then take it back and store it in your in your office or at your friend's house or wherever, so that uh, should something happen to your house, God forbid, a uh, fire or a thief, um, then you have uh, a safe backup copy somewhere else. Uh, you could do that with your one backup, but um, it's safest. The safest thing is to have a, a second backup, so you have three altogether. So um, that is my backup scheme, and uh, it it is simple and very effective, and Whatever you do, you definitely do want to have some kind of backup system. And in my opinion, simpler is better. So I hope that's been hap uh, helpful to you. And please back up your data. Thank you.